In today's episode, I would like to discuss the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet is a pretty well-known diet as far as diets are concerned. And the main talking point about it, I guess you could say, is that it has been shown to drastically reduce a lot of chronic long-term diseases, especially heart disease, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, etc. And what I like about this diet is not only that it's very effective from a physiological standpoint, it's also very easy. And it's not something that is restrictive for the most part. The only real thing I could say it restricts that we eat as a common everyday food or food group is meats. And even then it's not as restrictive. The main restriction it puts on is a limit on uh, red meat, animal meat, red animal meat. And I kind of just want to take this episode to talk about it, laud it, and also talk about some of the non-diet parts of the Mediterranean uh, lifestyle. So I guess first and foremost, I should name some components of the Mediterranean diet and foods that you should shop for and buy if you do want to follow this diet. So first we'll start with vegetables. And ideally, as far as I know, you know, just with my experience of um, and familiarity with Italian culture, is that generally you're going to be uh, buying local and buying seasonal. So if you see something that's out of season, generally I wouldn't purchase it if you're going to do a med eating pattern. Some of the typical vegetables you're going to find are going to be like tomatoes, zucchini, garlic, mushrooms, spinach, cabbage, lettuce, potatoes, peppers, onions, etc. As for dairy, the dairy products are generally going to be full fat and you, if you come from a nutritional background, you may be saying that that's not exactly the best thing because dairy products can have high saturated fats and saturated fats do contribute to heart disease especially. However, I think in this case most of these products are generally going to be, um, first of all, no real trans fats which is good, no hydrogenation, and a lot of these are going to be complemented with um, multi uh, monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats, which are the good fats. So, the dairy products on this list are going to be Greek yogurt, feta, ricotta, parmesan, etc. However, I'm just going to say if you have like a dairy intolerance, lactose intolerance, you may want to modify this part of the diet to make it more palatable to you. As, you know, a diet's not going to be helpful if you're just constantly sitting on the toilet every day or vomiting or feeling so bloated you can't move or having a ton of gas. So proceed with caution. Next category is going to be fats and nuts, and as I said before, the main sources of healthy fat are going to be mono and polyunsaturated fatty acids, as well as omega-3 and 6, which are linolenic and linoleic fatty acids. Those are shown, especially omega-3, linolenic acid, is shown to reduce the incidences of heart disease. And this is the mainstay of the Mediterranean eating pattern. To us, it may seem like a lot of oil and we're really 
kind of averse to seeing a lot of oil on a plate, for example. I know in Greece especially, there is a lot of oil in a meal. You can visibly see it in the dish. It almost looks like it's kind of swimming in it. But it's not something that bothers people. It's something that flavors the food. Anyway, the main oil, of course, is going to be olive oil, extra virgin. We have, for the nuts, uh, walnuts, almonds, pistachios. For beans, or our legumes, lentils, chickpeas, white beans, split peas, also known as fava beans. And legumes are a good source of protein, but they are also, a, you know, a very filling and they are good to use as both in soups or salads or casseroles, etc. For your meat group, uh, red meat, as I said before, not a big part of it. Usually, like, once a week, and I know in Italy there are uh, generally different courses. So, for one course, you're going to have the antipasto, and then another one will be the pasta. The next one will be uh, carne or pesce, so fish, meat, etc. So... For this one, most of the meat is not going to be high in saturated fats. Already said that. Going to be leaner. Uh, more fish is really emphasized. If you don't like fish, it's not the end of the world in the Mediterranean diet, but there is a lot of fish consumed in Mediterranean eating patterns and in Mediterranean countries. So you just may have to modify with that. I don't like fish. So this has always been a bit of a sticking point for me. Nevertheless, here are the foods. Uh, chicken. Uh, beef. Veal. Pork. Some fish and seafood. Uh, small fatty fish are more common. Uh, it, I've noticed that there are certain fishes that are eaten that have a higher mercury count naturally, more specifically swordfish. Swordfish does have a higher mercury count in nature. So if this is a concern for you, you're gonna probably wanna err on the side of not eating swordfish. But other seafood usually don't contain as much. So again, these are the smaller types of fish. Uh, shrimp, octopi, sardines, anchovies. If you, as a side note, uh, can't eat a lot of salt, if you're on like a sodium restriction, I would recommend not eating anything canned, especially not sardines or anchovies, so just be aware of that. And cod. For items just to have on hand as additives, honey, uh, vinegar, Capers, tomatoes, olives, wine. Wine also for drinking, very famously. But you can, again, add it as cooking wine or sherry in your food. For fruit, uh, one of the big ones is citrus fruits. And the citrus family are the big ones. It's also the Mediterranean basin is pretty famous for citrus fruits, lemons, oranges, etc. So the big ones here, oranges, apples, pears, peaches, figs, and apricots. Herbs and spices, oregano, parsley, dill, mint, basil. You also see herbal teas being drank, sage, thyme, etc. I also recommend trying to get whole pieces of whatever spice that you want instead of the canned versions because those can have a lot of salt in them as well. For breads and like grain products, so 
pastas mostly or couscous or rice and stuff like that. We have uh, bread, preferably whole grains because whole grains just offer you more fiber, B vitamins and the like. Uh, rusks, barley rusks, breadsticks, pita, filo, pasta, rice, and couscous. I'm surprised quinoa is not on here. Quinoa would definitely be on here. And for greens, uh, stuff like amaranth is really good. So now that I've given you a list, I want to kind of talk to you about, I guess you could say what the Mediterranean diet should mean to you in a sense of diet and eating patterns, but also in terms of lifestyle. So the Mediterranean diet is an emphasis on living intentionally and knowing that you're putting stuff in your body that is not going to contribute to adverse health far down the line. It's, a, it's an intentional form of clean eating and living. Generally, there's not really an emphasis on anything with sugar, processed, frozen. If you see vlogs of people from this part of the world, there is a lot of emphasis on going to the store every day, few days, to just buy the foods you need for that day or a specific meal, coming home cooking and then going to get more. For specific meals, like here, like, you know, we buy food for like two weeks, three weeks or whatever. But there it's a lot more get stuff for maybe a day, one meal, days meals, or even like a few days and then you go back. You could go to the local market or you could go to a supermarket. But there's also a lot less frozen foods and a lot less processed foods. You know, it's not as much corn syrup. <laughs> Primarily, this is going to be really good for people who need to mitigate heart disease, diabetes, other long-term health complications, watch their glucose levels. But, of course, Mediterranean diet also needs exercise. You, you always need to kind of counterbalance with your daily exercise. 30 minutes a day, ideally. So one of the things that really needs to be focused on if you're going to pursue this is that you actually need to eat slower and you need to eat earlier in the day. And I know here that's kind of hard, but you'll see people eating a, a bigger meal around lunchtime and, you know, dinner sometimes. It could be big, but it's also later. So naturally, you're probably going to go to bed later. If this is something that takes adjustment for you, I don't think you necessarily need to eat later, like at 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock. I know in Spain especially, they eat very late. I think a lot of Spanish families eat at like 10, maybe even 11, which to me is actually insane. Because I'm in bed at 10 o'clock, sleeping. I'm like going to sleep at 10. But that's just something they do. And I guess it can affect your digestive patterns, but if you're eating food like this, I don't think it matters as much. So, the point is just be uh, calmer, steadier. You may take longer to eat, as I say, slow down. Do it with friends and family. Eating outside is also very nice if you have the opportunity to. Obviously, in these countries, it's not always nice and sunny and whatever they get winter just like everybody else but like i'm saying you do kind of have to reprogram yourself reprioritize if you're afraid of eating a high fat diet because you think it will negatively affect you i'm just gonna say look at what types of fats and oils are in your food or that you're putting into 
uh, cooking. So generally try to stay away from anything butter based. Anything like shortening, margarine, as I said, butter, lard. I know most people don't cook with lard, but if you do, don't cook with lard anymore. Anything like that. Organic and plant-based is pretty much the name of the game here. This is not to say they eat no meat. They absolutely do, like sausage, chicken, fish, of course. But a plant-based diet has been shown, at least in vegan and vegetarians' case, to be a better predictor of weight loss, a better predictor of keeping blood glucose and blood pressure down so it's just overall healthier if you do run into some trappings but the med diet does not restrict animal products like vegetarianism and veganism do so it's a little easier they like beans there all types of beans so if you like beans <laughs> And I want to emphasize the omega-3 fatty acids in the nuts, walnuts, almonds, fish, uh, grass-fed meat and chicken, and eggs especially. There, are, There is, of course, eggs in this diet as well. They don't restrict eggs. But you really want to make sure you're having grass-fed products because it matters what the animal that you are eating ate. Of course, wine is a big thing. If you don't drink, it doesn't matter. You will be perfectly fine. And for those of you who do drink, it's recommended you really only have two glasses maximum. I, I don't know if that means full glasses. I guess they're just doing it in terms of a standard drink, which for wine, I think is like, I don't even, I have to, I'd have to look it up. But if we're looking at a standard wine glass, I would say it's probably like a third of the wine glass. I told you already about the heart disease studies and how it, you know, lowers LDL cholesterol, which is the low density lipoprotein, the bad cholesterol, as everybody likes to call it. So, yeah, whoop de doo. Uh, I want to also say generally. Try not to count calories when you're doing the med diet because you're really not going to be needing to. You're going to be eating mostly whole foods, mostly unprocessed, low sugar. There's a reason why people in a lot of other countries don't calorie count. It's because they have no need to. Their food is not so calorically dense that they have to be very attentive to the contents of the nutrition label they have a lot less sugar processing, corn syrup, hydrogenation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They, they also eat less protein, and protein excess, which we have in the United States, leads to fat storages. You also have to change, uh, when you're at the table, how you think of food. Eating less is important, and I know I sound like a broken record, but yeah, it's important in the med diet because just the more you eat and the more you think you need to eat, the more you will eat. Uh, for coffee, I want to say this. If you've ever seen any like Italian vlogs, the coffee cup is the size or the height, I should say, of probably like your pointer finger. It's a small cup. It's not big. There's, if you want macchiato, it's just a little dollop of milk or cream in there. And you drink it and you enjoy it. But it's not, it's not the huge Starbucks cup, that's for sure. Mint tea is good. I've 
heard mint tea is really good for your digestion and it helps uh, promote gut motility so it'll help your food process in a way that it won't be like chunky like when you try and pass a stool it won't hurt it won't constipate it'll get through easier a lot of people say it also helps with relaxation green tea as well antioxidants is great for fighting inflammation uh, i don't like tea so i don't drink these uh chamomile is the anti-anxiety tea as we know so if you like tea chamomile oregano mint and green tea oh and for desserts make sure you're eating that fruit because people in mediterranean countries love fruit they eat tons and tons and tons of fruit especially for desserts salads are a big part as well uh, for the mediterranean diet not only lettuce salads you have seafood salads salads with beans in them greek salads all different types so some recipes you can make if these sound good just look up some recipes you could make something like stuffed tomatoes and peppers you could make eggplant with herbs you can make a greek salad black beans with some herbs a lentil soup with feta and olives green beans and pork Salmon with spinach, lemon, and capers. And some pasta salad. So, if those are some things that sound good to you, that's pretty much what the med diet is about. And of course, you have stuff like spanakopita. <laughs> Anything feta. Lamb is a big one. And your classic, just bruschetta. So now I'd like to discuss uh, fats and oils right now. Generally, with your cholesterol, you want it to be below 200. And you don't want your triglycerides or your LDL to be too high, but you want your HDL to be uh, the higher the better. So a monounsaturated fat or a MUFA uh, increases HDL, cholesterol, the good cholesterol. This is the stuff that's good for heart health. This is in olive oil, avocado oil, and canola oil. Polyunsaturated fats or PUFAs have omega-3 and omega-6 fats. Uh, this decreases HDL and LDL, so I guess it's kind of a trade-off. Fish oil, if you take a fish oil supplement, this is you getting a polyunsaturated fat and omega fatty acid. Saturated fats increase LDL cholesterol and have a lot of triglycerides. This can be in butter, lard, or coconut oil. By the way, if you're going to stay away from any oil, please stay away from coconut oil to cook with or just to like eat put it on your food as a topping or whatever please just don't get near it the tropical oils are by far the fattiest so don't uh, use coconut oil and trans fatty acids uh, increase LDL and decrease HDL this is the one you're gonna really want to watch out for but there are very few naturally occurring trans fatty acids. Most of the time it's going to come when something is hydrogenated. So just look uh, on the label if you feel like it may be in your food. And see if it says uh, contains partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. That's something you want to look for because it 
increases inflammation and uh, heart disease. So here are some of the oils, like I said, that you're going to see in the kitchen. Olive oil is the pretty obvious one. Margarine, non-hydrogenated. If it's non-hydrogenated, it has no trans fat, it's slightly better. So if you're going to get any margarine, get the tub margarine and not the stick margarine. But ideally, just don't get margarine, but if you have to. Butter, we all know what butter is. <laughs> but butter is also not as harmful as we previously thought, but still don't use too much of it. Canola oil, which is pretty good. Flax oil. Oh, but note about flax oil. Sorry about that. This oil can spoil easily if you don't refrigerate it, so refrigerate this one. Coconut oil, as I said before, not really that good. Avocado oil provides 15% of your daily vitamin E, so very good to use when you're cooking something for heart-healthy oil. Lard uh, is not exactly something you want to be eating. I don't think you really would be eating lard. <laughs> it can come from animal fats normally, so honestly, if you just want to eat lard, just eat it off the animal. Don't buy a whole container of it. Because commercial lard is treated with bad chemicals and has a lot of hydrogenated fat. Uh, the one thing I know that may still have lard in it that a lot of people eat on a regular basis is refried beans. Try and get vegetarian refried beans if you can. Uh, we got palm oil. But palm oil, again, this is one of those tropical oils. Producing palm oil is very bad for the environment. It's probably one of the worst ones in terms of environmental impact and devastation so uh look for red palm oil it's unrefined it's not as uh bad for the environment if you do buy it but you probably shouldn't buy it fish oil this is going to be in fishes or you're going to take it as a supplement to help reduce cardiovascular disease Soybean oil, wouldn't really get this one. If it's hydrogenated, it will increase LDL cholesterol. Grapeseed oil is good. However, it has a pretty high amount of omega-6, so don't use too much of it. Safflower oil provides a lot of vitamin E as well. You got peanut oil. I would not use too much peanut oil, but it's not horrible for you. Sesame oil, again, wouldn't use too much of it, but it's good. It tastes good. <laughs> and the last one that I'm going to talk about is corn oil, which is uh, not... It's eh. I would get it, but, you know, don't go crazy. So if you want to use high heat in your med eating pattern foods, high heat is going to be when you're cooking something pan fry, stir fry, grill. Use sunflower, safflower, corn, peanut, sesame, soybean, olive, almond, coconut, palm, grapeseed, and canola. For moderate heat, if you're simmering or sautéing something, you can use butter, olive oil, sesame oil, peanut oil, corn oil. 
no heat if you just want to put it on something. Sunflower oil, safflower oil, flax oil, and canola oil. And baking, which I don't really recommend you do with a ton of oils, but I guess you have to if you want it to stick. Butter, uh, lard, maybe, corn, olive, coconut, palm, canola, soybean. If you want to make a plate out of this, if you want like a my plate, I'm using kind of the modified vegan plate, my vegan plate. So some tips are you're going to want to choose whole grains, of course, like I said before with the whole grain bread, it's the best thing to do. And you're going to want to put for the fruit category stuff like blueberries, bananas, oranges, and grapes. For grains, it's going to be whole grain bread, whole grain pastas, pita, phyllo, etc. For calcium, milk products, and again, they're usually whole fat milks, but I suppose you could probably get a lower fat if you're concerned. And your leafy greens are in here. Vegetables, stuff like uh, tomatoes, carrots, peppers, broccoli, and for proteins are your cheeses, so your feta, your mozzarella, your nuts, walnuts, almonds, pine nuts, pistachio, beans or legumes, and always remember to try and get enough B12 because you could become deficient in B12 if you do a Mediterranean eating pattern and you don't eat a certain amount of meat. So just be aware of that. Uh, when in doubt, just eat some breakfast cereal. There's a lot of vitamin B12 in uh, breakfast cereals. A couple other recipes that I would recommend to you if you're doing a med eating pattern is scrambled eggs with cherry tomatoes and feta. I've made that very good. Shakshuka is not traditionally Mediterranean, but uh, I know a lot of Mediterranean people probably eat it just because of the food, the composition. It's African, I believe, Northern African. but. Put like lamb or beef in there, would be great. Corn and tomato fettuccine. Tomato basil couscous. Uh, rotini with chicken and bell peppers. Roasted red pepper and parsley penne. Or even a pesto. Pesto is quite popular, especially I know in uh, Northern Italy, pesto is quite popular. Greek salads, as I said before, are really good, or something like with a pita, maybe even a gyro. Chicken with lime and black beans. Maybe a little salad on the side. Uh, orzo is very good with some chicken. Uh, caprese. Fettuccine with, let's say, red peppers and feta would be very nice. And pasta with capers, parsley, and breadcrumbs is a very, very yummy classic. I've had that. Very good.
I think I'm going to end it here, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to episode three. I hope I have kind of given you a basic understanding of the med diet, its benefits, what to eat, the ingredients, some lifestyle tips and practices that you should do when trying to participate and live your life according to a med diet and med eating pattern. So if you enjoyed this, I really hope that you do decide to pursue it at some point. You know, try it for a week, month, a year, etc. I myself am trying to eat according to this uh, eating pattern. Uh, it's a little difficult to do that in the US, but I'm trying my best. So I'd just like to thank you all for listening. Have a good day and I will see you soon. Goodbye.